Welcome back. You are tapped in episode number 47, Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast. How y'all doing? This is your boy, Bruce. I'm here with my brothers, Tyrone. What up, what up? Mike, what it do? You know, already know. You already know. Hey, man. Again, we back again. Episode number 47, holiday edition. Nah, this that was last week. Uh, y'all turkey and all the, the mac and cheese and all that and settled. I ain't even... I don't know about y'all, but I ain't even do no, you know how you normally like do a, a, a to go wrap up plate and all that and have a <laughs> have a, a second man. What what do you call it when you warm it up the next day? What the leftovers, to go plate, the go, to yeah, go plate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leftovers or whatever you want to call it. I ain't even do that this year. I had one plate pieced out. Mm. I ain't even take nothing with me. Mm. Everybody well, I mean, wanted look, me to take something. I was like, I ain't need, I'm good. Cool. I'm good. Cool. Yeah, because ain't no, uh, to goals is, is only for one day. You should, it's for the day of and the day after. If you eating outside of that, the same stuff, bro, that's not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm as guilty as charging because I was definitely getting leftovers two, day two, day two and three. So the, the only thing I ate until it was completely gone. Oh, was that pie that, that was blessed with by my brother? <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> patty cake, patty cake. Yes. He the baker's man. <laughs> man, I don't know what he did to that boy. I was like, golly. Hey, he came over with the, the fresh delivery. <laughs> Special <laughs> delivery. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, shout out my man. Shout out my man, Mike Jones. <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh, man. I Just to fill y'all in, man. Brother Mike, he he did us a solid, baked us some uh, sweet potato pie. Man, like, like Ty said, bro, that jank was so on fire. That thing was jamming, boy. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all, man. I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to get back in the bacon, getting the bacon itch, man, especially being on quarantine. It's just kind of been like, all right, let me, let me try to do some things, you know, that I haven't done in a while. So I just want to kind of dip my hand back into it. And my, my grandfather kind of got me back into it. So I was like, let me go ahead and let me, let me go ahead and share it. Plus, I knew, you know, holidays is a little different from everybody. So I just want to kind of give everybody a little sense of home, man, as, as much as I could. So. Mm. Mm. Hey man, I'll let you be humble, but yo, Patty, keep them pies, man. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, keep them pies, man. We we, we got a store. We good. Hey, bro, I was at Walmart too. They was out there on a, like <laughs> abundance, boy. Them Patty pies is out there like crazy. Yeah, keep them pies, Patty. We we straight. We good yep. over here. <laughs> hey, yo, man, you far too kind, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, man, appreciate you, Mike, man. That's always, bro. Yes, sir. That's love. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all, man. That's why, you know, got to gotta share the love and the wealth, man, when you can, you know what I mean? Are we at a point where we can order? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, man, the mind, we want to know. <laughs> we want to know. I want to know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you, if, you, if you want one, let me know, bro. I, I got you covered. I got you covered. I still got some sweet potatoes left. Let me know. Okay, <laughs> enough <okay>. said. <laughs> yep. Know where I'll be going to get mine. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I got y'all, man. I got y'all. I got y'all. Hey, man, but look, y'all, y'all, I, uh, Ty said he didn't get no, no leftovers. I didn't have Thanksgiving. Like, the only thing Thanksgiving I had was the pie. Uh, Mike, you said you've been eating them three, four days later. <laughs> yeah, I would say three. I, I the, the fourth day was kind of like, all right, this is it. Like, this is enough. <laughs> but like hey, the third day, donated. You should have donated it, bro. <laughs> hey, bro I, you know what though? Honestly, I, I, now now next time I, I make sure I do that for real. I, I didn't I didn't know, man. I really didn't know because like we did our you own know thing. You were eating that too much. You made too much. Yeah. yeah. Well, the crazy thing is, so we we actually tried our hand and actually trying to do a Thanksgiving meal this year. Um, you know, it was kind of like we it's our first time, kind of like being, I would say, kind of a little slowed down 
Um, so we, you know, it was like, all right, we're not really going to do too much. We're not really going to see family a lot. So let's just kind of throw our hand at it. And, you know, she made the turkey, uh, which came out really good. Um, she made the mac and cheese like she always does. And some Brussels sprouts, a little something, a little different greenery. Um, and I cooked up the stuffing and the, the potato salad and the, uh, and the pies, man. So we, we kind of just, we had our own little meal. So we had to eat. We, then we went over our in-laws house and had, had more food. So we kind of, we, we double dipped a little bit. So, so what, so this was your first initial year of like, like doing a full spread, just, you know, just for y'all at the house. Yeah. Yeah. This is our first year okay. trying it out. So we, we, hopefully we'll be able to kind of do it. And, you know, I know we, we always talk about this, you know, trying to create our own traditions and yeah. this year kind of felt like the, like the right time to, to put our hands at it to kind of like, you know, trial and error a little bit. Oh, for sure. I mean, I do want to give it one go, you know, when we, when we get set up to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Just to, you know, just to, just to have that experience in your own home. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to it, man. Whenever y'all, we can do it live in the person again, bro, because, man, it was a, it was definitely missed being able to go home to home and kind of take a little bite out of this, a little bite of that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I still think Thanksgiving overrated, but, you know, whatever. I heard a lot of people try to take that take, you know, but I'll let y'all, I'll let y'all live. I know where y'all heard it first. <laughs> oh man! Speaking of takes, man, we had questions last week. Questions we had last week, man. Uh, y'all want Mike? You want to get them to Tyler? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, um, we had two questions. We had a, a normal, our normal question. We threw a little bonus in there just for the, you know for the holidays and whatnot. Um, our first question was: Should racism be taught to people via masterclass? Uh, that was per our conversation on forty five, and. Um, Basically, sixty-seven percent said no. So that was a uh, it's a pretty resounding, resounding uh, you know statement that was made by the fans and the listeners. So, not, and I thought that was interesting. I felt like that was kind of along the lines of how we all kind of felt, um, in, you know, in regards to that that topic that we discussed. And um, the bonus question was, you know, through the holidays and everything, you know, people was like, you know, hey man, do you prefer your size to touch on your plate? Sixty-three percent said. All day long, they like them sides touching. We even got some people sending us DMs saying, "Yeah, man, let let my sides touch." So that was a uh, it's a pretty pretty uh, pretty resounding number two with that. So that's how I try to tell y'all, boy. <laughs> I try to tell you. Yeah. Nah, man, give me the kitty plate with the dividers up, man. Come on, <laughs> I don't need nothing touching. Nah, some some stuff got to touch, bro. Some stuff got to touch. Nah, nah. You said it's cooked like that. It's put on a plate like that for a reason, man. And they'll you know, touch at some point in the process, just not <clears throat> whether it's gonna touch going down or when it's in there. It's gonna touch at some point, <laughs> like yeah. you said. Yeah, I, I I lose control of it at that point. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it was good, man. Um, I did want to mention something real quick. It wasn't on the questions, and I just noticed it when I was in the car. Um, after we recorded, maybe I want to say like four days later, I was in the car. And uh, yeah, this was after Thanksgiving for sure. So they were on the radio station talking about favorite Christmas songs. And a lot of people, boy, man, I feel like these takes I be saying, man, they, they just be out here percolating in the people's minds because a lot of people were stealing some takes. A lot of takes were stolen. Hey man. People said that they only song they like to listen to is this Christmas by Chris Brown. I wanted this pointed out that was here first. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we recorded before it's Thanksgiving. Of, it's a lot of first going around that's popping up later. You know? But uh I just wanted to put that out there real quick. You know what I mean? We y'all look, man, y'all gonna need to just start we're gonna start stamping our tags, bro. We'll start tagging our stuff when we put it out because it's getting nasty out here, bro. Fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. I just but, want y'all to just give us a credit. That's all. Like, if, if, if y'all yeah. got it from, if y'all stole it from us, just give us a credit. Shout us out, man. Like, if, if y'all listen to us on a sneak, like, just, like, let your people know, man. It's okay. We not gonna, we not gonna charge y'all. We, 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 we gonna, she gonna show love. That's it. It's so. enough room for all of us to eat. Absolutely. Yeah, yo. Yeah. Well, let's go and get this started, man. <laughs> oh, man. This week, man, on, uh, what's, what's my name, my main name? From the from two kitchen, <laughs> 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 he said, "Start throwing it around in a circle." 
<laughs> oh, my, my man God. Kevin said, yo, you got to relax. <laughs> Kevin Kelly won't have any, baby. He said, get off my table. <laughs> yes, sir. Man, but if y'all not tuned in on what we're talking about, man, owner of uh, True Kitchen Cocktails, oh, well, yeah, True Kitchen and Cocktails, Kevin Kelly, uh, he responded It's a lot of drawbacks, a lot of blowback that he got received from uh, him asking those ladies, young ladies, to stop twerking and dancing and how he wanted his uh, restaurant to be for us black folks to have somewhere to go and enjoy ourselves, but not like act to the stereotypical way. Um, Comments, concerns, anything y'all got to say from the beginning part of this? I mean, I think he was, it's his restaurant. I think he has a right to, 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 if he doesn't want that kind of behavior or activity in his restaurant, he has a right to say that. Yeah, I mean, I, I try not to jump on headlines and 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 inside with any with anybody, just because for one, I don't know the whole story, I don't know how the such or the whole situation. A lot of things could have transpired that I'm not abreast to. Because um, to be honest, the first first initial take, <clears throat> excuse me, of me seeing the the viral little snippet of the video, uh, I was kind of like, man, like what? You know, I understand that's your establishment and you're the owner, but why, you know, why would he take that abrasive approach to the whole audience of the, of the establishment? But then, you know, later you find out little, little smaller things that, oh, the, well, these young ladies were asked multiple times to, to, to not act as they were acting. And now you kind of got to go backwards and be like, oh, well, you know, maybe that was warranted. If he, you know, if, if, if him and his staff can, you know, continuously ask for you not to behave in a certain man, manner in his establishment and you're not, you know, you're, 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 you're not being, uh, you're not acting as he, as he's asking, you're not granting him that, that, that wish that I think he is entitled to, to control the environment. Uh, you got to look at it different, but you know, a lot of people jump on different sides without, without knowing the whole thing. And I could have been one of those persons had I not waited and kind of just l- listened to a little bit more of what went on and what transpired. Okay. So y'all both feel that he was not in the wrong for asking those ladies to not turn his restaurant into TGI Fridays on the after 12 situation. No, nah, I mean, cause if you don't, that's what it'll turn into. And then you're going to lose the audience that you was really targeting. Okay. So there's nothing wrong. With, like, so, all right. Because this is what I saw a lot of people saying. He had a DJ going and spinning at the same time. So that doesn't, like, is DJ automatically equipped to dancing scene? Depending on what the, depending on what he's playing. Well, I mean, he's obviously playing something they could twerk it to. So, <laughs> I mean, it won't like it was playing Silent Night and they was in that jet going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in general, if it depends on what they're playing. Obviously, in this case, they had to be playing this type of music, which warranted dancing. Yo, if somebody twerking a silent night, let's just stop the music, bro. Like, hey, listen, anything goes these <laughs> days. You never know, man. They'll find a yo, way to make it happen. That 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 you you are, you are so true on that. Um, I mean, no, it doesn't equate to to doing it. I get it. If you hear a song that you like that you love that you've twerked to before, you you may get the urge to do it. But there's no dance floor in the restaurant. So I, I think you kind of have to have a, a, you know, some sense of the decorum where you are, uh, you know, a, awareness of your surroundings and be like, eh, this isn't the time or the place for me to do that. Um, now, if they want to do that outside or when they checking out, cool. You're on your way out at that point. But no, nah, not, not in the middle when I got, my chicken breast on my plate and I see you twerking your ass in my face. Like I, I'm, I'm good on that. I'm with my wife. Like relax. If, if I want to twerk, if I want to see twerking, I, I, I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to King of Diamonds or I'm, I'm going to Follies. I mean, it's, mm, you, well, I mean, you ain't got to go that far for that either though. That's just true too. That's true too. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very thin line to try to draw. I mean, obviously, if you don't want that kind of activity happening, perhaps play a better selection of music where that wouldn't happen. Um, 
the atmosphere is how you determine what happens in it. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm not completely against the people who are out, like somewhat outraged. Um, and to the people who are outraged, just don't frequent the restaurant. If you have a problem with how he responded or how he acted, let's stop trying to make everything a boycott. Uh, like, like I'm, we're gonna shut this, shut him down. If you don't like what he said, don't go. If you have a problem with how you was treated, this is just like anywhere else. I don't like they they customer service, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna partake in going there. But if he's saying like, hey, I'm I want a a more tamed interaction or atmosphere in my in my establishment, either respect it or check it. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what it boils down to, to be honest. I mean, if that's if that's how he wants it handled in that situation and you know, he and he and he's giving you that information if that's something that you don't want to abide by. Pretty sure that's not the only restaurant in that area. And the other thing, though, I, the, where I do have a problem is, is that he shouldn't be like where he what he may have been trying to say is like, hey, look, we don't want to have that kind of restaurant. We're just trying to be like somewhere nice for y'all to like enjoy yourselves, but not like dancing and all that. He should have just said that he shouldn't be telling black women how to be black women, though. Now, I will agree with some of the some of the terms that he chose to use when presenting that to because now. You're not only talking to the person that was actually carrying out the action. Everybody mm-hmm. in there wasn't 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 twerking. Um, but now you're 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 irate towards that person, but you're taking that irateness and spreading it across everybody that's supporting you, which may or may not have had something to do with what was going on. Mm-hmm. I don't need a lesson from you if I'm not involved in whatever was going on. Um so Maybe the approach could have been a bit different. You know, he he could have he could have said some things things a little bit different. He could have you know maybe posted some signs and did some IG post and some type of policy somewhere that he wants to make it clear that before you enter, this is you know this is how we want this environment you know carried out. So I mean, but but again, you know, I don't own that space and. I'm not responsible for the for the uh, profits and losses there. That's how he chose to handle it. But uh, if it were myself, I, I think the approach would have been a bit differently. I, I don't want to shout at an audience that has nothing to do with what went down. Yeah, it, I honestly, I, I agree with both you guys. Like the, that, that was my only issue that I took away from this whole situation was just the approach. I get it. Yes, you you asked him twice. You go up to him very nicely twice and say, "Hey, I want you guys to stop." The third time, if you want to make an example, yes, you can do that. But you can do that in a way where you don't have to necessarily kind of sound like a like an ass doing it. You basically, you can still come across, you know, gracious and still come across as forceful trying to make an example out of them. And I think he chose that time to do that, but I just think he did it a little bit incorrectly. And that's my only, that's my only issue with this whole thing. Just this your approach. Well, hopefully, you know, he he's gonna have some trainings. Um, he's gonna try to he's gonna talk with people who are successful in that atmosphere. Um, and ask them how they would conduct themselves in that kind of situation. Because I think that's something that any owner of any establishment needs to like you need to kind of have those kind of ground rules in place before these incidents even occur. So uh, you know how to actually maneuver yourself on how to get that to stop. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, I think too often it's people who get this, these businesses and they don't know how to, they only know the business side, but they don't understand that it's multiple. Like you got to be, as the owner, you got to be the accountant, you got to be the HR, you got to be uh, the actual operator. Like it's, it's more to it than just saying, like, oh, I'm going to put my money down and I, this is what I want. You got to actually know how to talk to people. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of drawbacks that can come with that if you handle it incorrectly. Yeah. And as as there is groups that may understood it, may understood it for what it was, but didn't really like the approach that have the ability to support. Uh, you know, they may have a different mindset now towards that restaurant. No matter how good the ratings were or the reviews were, if I got to go there and be people going to shout at me for other people's actions. Listen, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not down for that. Yeah. yeah. So 
it's, it's, it's another, you know, and everything's not about money, but in business, <laughs> that's kind of a big deal. Um, so you, you, you kind of have to watch how you tailor those messages to your audiences. That's true. That's true. But, but also too, you know, some people got, if, if you, if you are in the wrong, it's okay to be, to, to admit that you were in the wrong. You know what I mean? Like that, that like you don't twerk, like nobody twerks at the dinner table. <laughs> like, uh, um, there's environments that do support that. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> he may or may not need to look at the full scope of what his environment entails. <laughs> Going True. back to because I, I I'll be honest, I didn't know about the DJ part. Yeah, it was a DJ that playing. So, you and know, I've definitely been at some brunches where it's some mimosas. Some waffles. I mean, yeah, you got party. alcohol there. He <laughs> you know did say it's a, what is it, restaurant and bar or something? What was yep. it? Yep. So restaurant and bar. There's music and you got alcohol. And that environment might might invite that. You know what I mean? I, I, and, but like Bruce is saying, if, if you don't want that in your establishment, there definitely should be some ground rules laid before people walk in there. Yeah. And I know I the mean, next person that walks in there won't do it. And that's fair to him, you know. To, that, that is fair to him to 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 promote the type of environment that he wants. Uh, but you kind of need to be forthcoming with that information. I, I agree. Well, I mean, you don't even got to put the you don't even got to have a written down rules for people to see. You just you control the environment by what's being done in the environment. Like if you have a DJ playing round of applause, what you think gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas if or, you got the or, DJ and they're playing Cold Train, Cold Train or something, like yeah. it it's gonna like be it. conducted more towards a like this is that that kind of environment. Yeah, don't 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 put that juvenile on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> or it, 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 and, and like and here's a gem for him. If you really want to be able to play that kind of music, but you don't want them to act that way, play the in- instrumental version. Yeah. It means a whole lot different when it's instrumental, because people don't hit them words. Some they just don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Spice taught you that. Facts. <laughs> All facts. <laughs> <laughs> All facts. All facts. But we we've killed Kevin Kelly and and this whole situation at True True Kitchen. Um, I, let's move to the next man. Oh boy, we we talk about this man a couple of times a lot lately, man. But this time we're gonna have to give him all, all applause. Shout out Pharrell, man. Pharrell's out here seeing change need to be made and is trying to conduct it himself. I, I always applaud that. Um, y'all heard about the Black Ambition Initiative? No, nah, I'm a little late to the party on this one. Yeah, I um I did hear about it earlier this weekend uh, when they when they rolled it out and um. I, th- I thought it was a really good, I mean, I, I thought it was a really great, great idea from Pharrell. I think he's, I, I mean, listen, he, he's done things of this caliber before. Um, he's always trying to put on and, you know, for Virginia and this time it's like he's trying to do the same for, for black and Latinx entrepreneurs. So um, he, he's, he's definitely got some, some good bones in regards to this particular venture. Um, I know he was working with, um, one of the Instagram, I don't want to call her an influencer by chance, but, um, she's one of the people who's out there supporting black people and black businesses. Uh, Miss, I think her name is Kazia Williams. I'm hope I'm not mispronouncing her name. Um, and also working with United, United Negro college fund, as far as funneling money and, and, you know, proceeds to sort of helping entrepreneurs kind of get a foot up in the game, especially in the, the startup world and just to, the, the entrepreneurial space in general. Um, and, you know, of course he's, he's also got his sponsors, the people that really rock with him, like Chanel and, and, uh, and companies of that, of that magnitude Adidas, uh, to be able to do something like this and Adidas as well. Yep. Thank you. And, um, you know, I, I, I think this is a good, I get think him, this is a good a little, thing. Give him a little back before you, hold on, before you give him the, 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 the whole, let's get him. Cause you know, town, town, not necessarily with us yet. Mm. Um, Pharrell, basically, that Black Ambition, he launched Black Ambition, which is an uh, incubator for Black and Latino ex, uh, Latinx entrepreneurs, um, yep. specifically in the tech, design, healthcare, and consumer businesses. Um, and like Mike said, he's, he's got a lot of his contributors from people that he already works with, um, as well as uh, will be con- 
making competitions for historically black community. I mean, historically black colleges and universities. Um, so now go ahead and give us give us give us the take, Mike. No, nah, I, I, I mean I think this is. I mean, I think this is needed. This is necessary. Um, I do love the scope of the of the startups that he's that he's in because those four particular fields seem to be the ones that we partake in frequent in the most. And I think I, I think I'm pretty fair in saying that we 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 use technology quite a bit as a black community. We're we're into fashion and design, just not even just fashion, but architectural and electrical engineering. Just on that caliber, we're in healthcare. Um, and you know, we, we are one of the biggest consumers of products from a wide range of different industries. So I I think this is going to be helpful for us going forward. I am still going to be cautious in regards to how this is rolled out and to see what comes of it. I, I don't really want them to just pick up VCs and startups that are, that are already established. Like, let's see if you, if you really are in the the space and you're claiming to do mentorship and training, then I want to make sure that you do that. Like there's, you see an idea and you help it come to fruition from the ground up. So that's kind of what I'm really looking for in this regard with this program. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I think that's fair too. Um, Just kind of, you know, we've been down the road of people wanting to support the, the, the black and brown businesses and, um, it, it doesn't always turn out in our favor or they'll pick the ones that are like already striving or, you know, the ones that have an operation already existing, mm-hmm. but not always the ones that have a really, really, really great product and business plan. They just don't have the backing to get to the next level. So um, ho- hopefully those those types of uh, businesses are touched and, and um, transformed. I have to agree. I have to agree. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just like the podcast game. You know, it's all about who you know. Um, and unfortunately, the people that know everybody don't necessarily be making the best product. Mm, but, you know, right. that's for a conversation for another day. <laughs> um, or well, you got the big companies looking at what the small one's doing, and, and they know they can't manufacture those types of products at, at a mass quantity. Mm, so that's so like, oh, let me, let me go ahead and pick this up, because I know you can't fight me in court. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Just hopefully it's, it's, it's executed in a way that it is evenly distributed to people who don't necessarily have those connections, who should be the ones that you'd be connecting to anyway. Because mm-hmm. uh, usually right. if you got the connections, you're eventually going to get the dollars. Right. 100%. Um, but Ty was actually... Mentioning something there that kind of like goes into the next part of what we want to talk about with Pharrell. Um, what, two weeks ago, he dropped the human care, the human made, mm. human made uh, facial routine for, for, the, for us, mm. yeah. for the human, human, human race. Um, do you feel that that's a, do you feel that is a possible big, big company trying to take out the little companies? situation uh i don't know that it is a direct attack um but it 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 truly is an an organic attack just by how it will be you know how it will formulate it what you're obviously going to reach uh you know a, a lot a larger population of the small businesses that have been doing or offering these types of products for years um, so I, I, I don't want to say that it's, I don't want to make it seem like it's direct because I don't know that. Um, but it will, you know, organically affect some of the smaller companies, depending on if they, uh, you know, know him or if they're from the area or if they know about the product. Cause I feel like a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, business formulations, uh, weigh the successfulness of them weigh heavily on the popularity of the the face of the franchise. Well, I mean, I'm gonna say mine, and I'm like, I'm gonna let Mike get in his real quick. Um, I feel that this situation is is it's kind of operating in a way that the Adidas thing is situ- like it's it's operated like it's on limited qualities. Um, 
And the quality, I mean, obviously we won't know what the quality is yet until it's been out for a little while. A lot more people are able to get their hands on it. Um, but the thing that stood out to me is that Perot could have actually gotten to this uh, business opportunity years ago. Um, we were asking his facial routine years ago, and he would not tell us. He would just say he exfoliates. And, and that to me was just kind of like, okay, he just really don't want us to know. So fine. But then for today, for that product to come out now and it's like, oh, let me tell y'all about my facial routine that I've created for everyone. And it's, it just seems more like, it doesn't seem as genuine to me. Um, I'm not going to, I can't dictate his, his intentions or whatnot, but I just, it just seems like it's a grab. It's a money grab. Um, to me, there's an opportunity where you, you're, you just, we just talked about you having a black ambition um, initiative coming up. And there's plenty of black owned facial care routines, um, like companies out there. Why not tag along with one of those companies who, who, who might need that extra little boost to get there as opposed to like saying, Oh, I'm gonna create my own. Like, to me, that's how is, is you know. I am, am I am I wrong in that thinking? No, not at all, not at all. I, honestly, you took the words right out of my mouth, bro. <laughs> Some real, like I, like you just said, we we've been clamoring for him to do this for years, and he has refused. He has stayed silent, and like you said, he basic to me, it it is is very disingenuous. Uh, I, I like you said, it's a money grab. I, I I agree with everything you just said, and and quite frankly, I feel like. You're saturating a market that's already saturated, but it's saturated in a way where, like Ty was saying earlier, these smaller companies are buying up some of these black-owned startups because they see they're gaining steam and momentum. So it's like, hey, you know what? If you wanna, if you wanna rise to scale and reach the reach the masses, come join us. We'll give you a certain amount of money. We'll let you keep you know a certain percentage of your company, but we'll help you get to to market a lot sooner in a, in a, on a bigger scale. So when you, when you have that going on, there are a lot of other companies that are still underneath just waiting for their opportunity. And they have a small cult following that's keeping them alive and keeping them in business. And all they need is just one opportunity, one, one particular uh, ad from an influencer or, or, you know, somebody that's popular, just, just to kind of get them the recognition that they look for. And it just sucks that he took the time Right now, like you were saying, to use that as opportunity to, to get off his business, and on top of that, get somebody that actually needs the skincare routine. Don't mm-hmm. just pick the six or seven or ten prettiest people with the with the best skin that you can find to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> who who are some of the people put up? He got, he got, <laughs> man, who got he plugged got, in. He got Tyler. Tyler the creator skin been great since he since he was a kid. Since he, since he was, since he was, he was with Odd Future when they first came out. Like, come on, fam. Like, Scissor skin, Scissor's been been beautiful with her skin. Like, DeAndre Hopkins has always had good skin, along with with good hands because he catches everything. Like, it's just like you 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 just grab, <laughs> bro. Like, <laughs> hey, like, he tied that all the way in. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> like he just he just grabbed people that we knew that we all like and appreciate on a certain level and. He just put them in the front of this camera and said, "Hey, I'm taking this POV picture. You just this looks stoic. Like, come on, fam. Like, oh, so it was like the Beyonce Ivy Park rollout, basically, minus the Popeyes. Oh, damn! <laughs> wow, jeez. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's bad, man. It's not bad. Uh, obviously, I can't tell nobody who got more money than me what to do with their money. <laughs> that's just that's kind of counterintuitive, ain't it? Right, right. Yeah, that's but it. yeah." You know, I, I'm and I'm trying not to be overly opinionated because sometimes you shouldn't be talking about people money situation. But I could definitely, you know, give some op, like some some suggestions, some things that you know might have did might have worked more well with the initiatives that you're trying to build, like the black initiative. Uh, you know, and it's it's plenty of those people who are in, in money that have shown that hey, we can just invest. We don't have to actually take over the business and try to make like it's ran by me, uh, i.e. Bevel um, and Nas, you know, he, he obviously is a part of the, the company, you know, he's a, an investor, but mm-hmm. it's not like Nas's business. 
it doesn't come out as Nas business. It's still Tristan Walker's company. He just invested in it. Uh, he saw the vision. He believed in what he saw and said, you know, I'm 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 a stand behind you. I, I felt like Pharrell could have did that same thing. But at the same time, he might have said, you know what? Look, I want to own it myself. Like, I want it to be my thing. It's my, it's my face. So, but I don't know, man. Some of y'all people out here nasty, though, because the product ain't even been out for a whole month. And y'all trying to, y'all, y'all giving out reviews. Like, <sighs> it ain't been out long enough for you to have a true review over. Yeah, now that is... That's just <laughs> that's just a bias at that point. You just, you know, you and it, and that goes back to what I was saying. There's that's a that's a popularity contest. You yep. you love this person and 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 whatever whatever connection you came upon when you heard about Pharrell whenever how long ago. This is just a if he's in it, I'm in it. You know, it's just like love we have for, you know, players you know and you know if they're if if this player goes to i don't care what team he goes to i'm essentially rooting for the player not the team oh lebron fans well i mean you you can say that <laughs> he, he's I definitely mean, a, look at a lebron he, he, fan he, closet they got Cavs jersey they got two versions of Cavs jersey it's a true example <laughs> <laughs> a miami heat jersey a lakers jersey like, yeah i'm just rocking with him you know yep. what i'm saying and that's and i feel like for those, especially with a skincare product, like as, as me as a as, as a male, we, we alluded to this I, I think a couple of weeks ago. You know, I I didn't always put that much emphasis on these types of products. Some someone like my wife has, and and she tries to like create her own stuff, and I always wonder like why is her counter so full, and my I don't even have all this stuff, <laughs> you know, and that that's her <laughs> testing to figure out what works for her. So. Right. I, I don't know about the review to be that quick and say it, it's the best thing smoking. It's just, it's great. Best thing since sliced bread. Like, I don't know how you can come out that fast and be on that side of the review. Yeah. The, see, that's, that's the problem I have with, with, with influencers for the most part. I feel like, you know, every, all three of us on this podcast have an affinity for Pharrell to, in some shape or form. He's from VA. We 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 like what he does from the for the community for the most part, and but we we all have a uh, an unbiased opinion when we see something we when we see something we don't really agree with. We we have a, we call him out, and that's just for anybody. We we don't try to hold any punches or try to be biased here in this in this in this regard at all. But I think some people, like Ty was saying, they hold that biasness, and what happens is there's a cult, uh you know a community of people that will will gravitate towards that, and they hang on that every word that particular influencer that they follow or that they like says. And then what happens is now you're, you're not getting a true opinion. You're only getting that one person's opinion. So how about, you know what? I see this glowing review. I'm going to go with a unglowing review. I'm going to go with a, you know, a negative review. I'm going to see exactly what's, what's the negative of negatives of that. And then I'm going to try it for myself and see if it works. And then either if it doesn't work, I won't recommend it to anybody. If it does, and I'll, I'll shout it out from the rooftop. But I think we have to have a, a level of, especially in today's world, there needs to be a level of uh, intellectual awareness when it comes to consumerism. I, I don't think we really do that enough as a community, and I think we need to start doing that more. Like, it's cool if you, you, you get a bag for promoting a product, that's great. But be, be honest. I mean, Marcus Brownlee's one person that I... I I'll mention in this regard, and he's a tech influencer, and he he has no he holds no punches back. If he has a product, he's going to review his review. If you if you watch him, sometimes they're not as glowing, but sometimes they're, they're always going to be pain points that he points out. There's always things that he doesn't like, even if he loves the product. Right. That's just what he does. Everything can improve. Exactly, and we also know, especially with tech. Every year is something different. <laughs> so it's like yeah. one year they put yeah. this in, next year they take this out. So, you know, I, I think we people, he would be one person to look at. Yeah, I think if, if any influence is looking at that, he's one person that his opinions are always unbiased. And he'll tell you, he'll be honest, this is what I'm using, this is what I'm not using. So, yeah. I, I and just, even some, even sometimes to that point, sometimes the stuff that he dogs, he end up using. <laughs> exactly. 
Like, you know what I mean? He always get, he always is holding Apple to the fire, but he, he'll use an Apple product, like, no problems at all. Uh, absolutely. 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 But, I mean, that's what a, a true influencer is. That, it's, we need to do sub, subdivisions of influence. Because mm. the, the, what so-called influencers are, the, the social media influencers, they, they running light out here, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it's yes, slim sir. for them right now. Yes, sir. They, because what they are really, the, those influences are truly just wave riders. Mm-hmm. And they just, you know, they 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 tag these companies enough so that they can f- get free product out to them, and you know, they're not really influencing much, but the people who just ride the wave. So, yeah. you know, it's a lot of people who who didn't f with New Balances. Uh, five years ago that they, you know, certain influencer put it out there like New Balance is the new thing and now someone like me who was effing with New Balance for for years, who was getting them for the 50, for this, you know, 50, 70 dollars when they was dropping on discount, got a, they trying to make me pay resale. It's like, nah, bro, I'll come back when the wave over. Because this that's what I was rocking before y'all was on this wave. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can go rock these Asics. You know what I mean? It's like it, it's other things I can go out here and find. Facts. You know that's what an influencer is. An influencer ain't following the wave. They see the wave and they say, you know what? I, I and I've acknowledged that's the wave, but I can do something different. You know what I mean? I don't want to be looking like everybody else. Like we're in that place now, boy. If you the whole crew had the same Jordans on at the same time. Like that that's nasty. I remember growing up, if you had the same, if you had the same shoe as me, I probably took mine back and get a, get the Reebok. Bro, when people used to ask me where I shop at, I was like, man, I don't know. Hey, we used to say, oh, I got this from New York. Cause bro. Ain't never been to New York. Never. <laughs> I got this from New York. Never. What mall you go to? I'm gonna name this one because I know I'll never go there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the influencer now though. They they see where everybody getting, they say, Oh man, this is the new heat flame. Let me show you. Like, this facial routine kit, like, this is what's going on. Like, I mean, that's cool, but how about you You put on somebody that you actually F with and been effing with? Like, yeah, I, I've i tried this product. This is good, but this is, I was using this, and I don't think this is going to take this out of my, my rotation. Yeah. Like, that's what true influence is doing. Like, I got access to these products, but I'm not going to just get, like, Oh, oh, this is the best thing I ever had just because they gave me a check. Yeah, let's let's uh influencers out there. Let's have some respect for those that are watching those videos. Mm. Have some respect mm. for those that are actually trying to use you to make a a a a decision on if I'm going to invest my money into this product or if I'm not. Don't get up there if you I mean if you know you giving out biased information, stop it. Like tailor your message at the beginning. Hey, I mess with these people. I'm always gonna mess with these people, no matter what they give me. Like, let's let's have some real, real. Let's be real about it, because you got people out here going spending money, and you know, a lot of times you can't just get off. You can't give it back, or you can't get a re- refund, or especially now, um, you know, with COVID, you know, a lot of people are not doing returns, so mm-hmm. they get something that you gassed up, and they all excited about it, and then it turns out to be nothing, like what you said it was. You put them in a jam. They could have spent their money on something that they really would have enjoyed. So, I mean, yeah. and we and they're liking the video. So that's support yeah. to you. So you're doing a disservice to the to the industry that you're supposedly servicing. Hey, that boy shooting from half court again. Hey, Steph Curry range over there, boy. <laughs> have Pulling respect up, for your consumer. Jeez. I mean, Pulling come up, on. The logo, man. That's what I'm talking about. Good God. Come on, man. Yeah, please. Just, you know, be mindful of that, man. I mean, people out here spending their hard-earned money, man. But that's why I also, like, I fuck with the people who are, like, I, I, I entertain sometimes. I watch the YouTube stuff and, and see these people be doing their influencing thing. And the ones who actually, like, influence that, that kind of has their own thing. They usually end up trying to make their own product because they want to mm-hmm. s- satisfy themselves, not mm-hmm. like the the everybody else people. Right? right. Those are the ones I try to find because that means they got their own wave. And not that I'm trying to find them so I can follow like them, but I want to support the people who do that 
You know what I mean? I don't want to support the people who ride in the wave. I want to support the people who create that wave. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it, it's just nasty, man, because you know, pe- people do anything for a check. And do anything for a pop- for popularity contest to to be the the number one this and that. And I think the only thing I I, I don't want to see is that, you know, sometimes those people end up getting exposed at certain points. And we, you know, the the seeing the fall from grace live, just as much as we saw the rise, is always one thing that should always alarm people as to, you know, how, how you should move. You see certain people come up, had that 15 minutes of fame, and then they fall just as quick as they rose. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I want, like like Ty was saying, like like you were saying too, you know, Brother Bruce, um, y'all just got to be careful when y'all trying to, de- to influence in these products. Just Just be honest. I think honesty goes a long ways, not only just in business, but in life and in everything that you do. You have a level of honesty. You'll you'll stand the test of time. Yeah. I mean, you can't lose. Like, you can lose some small little battles. You can lose some small little checks on the way. But that the 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 check that's on the other side of being honest is always going to outweigh that little small one that you was trying to break your neck for. Mm. Hey man, we got we got too many soldiers trying to be generals, man. They're trying to win the battle, not the war. You know, people gonna people, man. So just just take what we we giving y'all as perspective, man, and and come up with your own decision. That's because that's what we're really asking y'all to do. Yeah, is right. is to be your own person and know why you made these decisions. Because don't be these people who make these decisions following the crowd, and then oh, they said something I don't like, cancel them. Well, if you would have did your research, you would have known they wasn't supporting you from the jump. Yeah. Or the people like you. A lot of that information ain't so secret these days. Man, it sure ain't. That's a fact. But I mean, I'm, I'm we gonna go ahead and move on over, man. You know, we've gave the influencer some, we done gave Pharrell some. Still congratulations to Pharrell though. Black ambition. It, it, that's that's a good move. I like that. Um I mean right. the, the the skincare thing is a good move, but I just wish you would, you know, maneuver a little differently. That's all. Um Next up, man, April 2017, and now in the grand closing of December 17 this year. Um, everyday struggle is no longer a struggle. <laughs> uh, everyday struggle has, uh, uh, they've calling it a wrap uh, December 17th. Uh, were y'all, do y'all ever watch Everyday Struggle at all? Are I y'all fans of it at all? No, I, I never watched it. I, um, I was when, when, when Budden. Was in when they first rolled it out with Button in, in academics in the desk. Um, and, and once Joe left, that was pretty much the last time I actually watched it. Do you feel that he gave that uh, that that program the let's see the authenticity that it needed, or I th- I, th- I think he did, and and I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the reason why I stopped watching it was because of the the, the behind the scenes stuff that they did, uh, that he alluded to, basically pointed out, that was never refuted. Um, and I, I'm always going to side with somebody that's creating their own product, and when they get tossed from their said product and it gets taken over by a company, and they don't move with the level of authenticity or honesty that they need to, things like this happen. You try to throw as much money to it as possible, but there's only so many times you're gonna keep wasting money. And um Well I think that kinda of answers my next question. So you're not a fan of complex? No. No. Okay. Uh Ty, do you um subscribe to any of the complex stuff or No. Nah. None of it? No. Nah. Okay, so so if I'm speaking for both of y'all, y'all do you do you feel like they are the what Dame Dash would call culture vultures, that that particular entity. I would say so. You think they buying into the culture? I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I'll take a I'll take it a step further. I look at Sean Evans and what he did with you know first year feast, um, first week feast. I'm sorry, and uh, what he did with Hot Ones, and they gave him a check, and they turned it into a show, which I don't think is anywhere near what with the true essence of what that show was. And now they've kind of made a mockery of it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I like Sean Evans, though. Um, I, I love Sean Evans. 
Yeah, I, I really like Sean Evans. He's a Chicago guy. Um, definitely like him. Uh, he seems like a real cool dude. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that they have, they have, uh, I guess, let's, yeah, let's go into it, man. Um, Ty mentioned these small companies buying up these startups and, you know, pretty much trying to take over that, that, a lane. That's what Complex did. Um, you know, the, the sneaker division was, was so, um, dang, what was it? Not Soul Provider. Soul Collector. Yep. Yeah. You know, they, they took Soul Collector and, and put it in the entity. So they was like, oh, we got the, the sneakers, streetwear stuff. Um, they, they, they also do the same. Like, they got some kind of cahoots with, with Hypebeast, I feel, as well. Um, a lot of people from Hypebeast end up being at Complex for some reason. Um, the same thing, like, like Mike just said, with the, the So We Feast. Um, what else? Who else is over there? That's, they've done stuff similar to that. I can't think of it. I, I think Def Jam has kind of gotten their their ways over there, especially with the the move that they made. Um, yeah, with, with, Noah. with Noah. Yep, yep. So they and honestly, let, let, let's be honest. Um, I, I think we all been sneaker guys since we were kids growing up. Soul Collector was one of those sites where you always went to, and they always had the information. The forums were always great. They always had the great information. Once Complex got their hands on it, it's went downhill since then. Yeah. And, and I'm, sneaker I'm, blog is, the sneaker blog is dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. But, I mean, back to back to this. But, I, what, I mean, it, a lot of stuff is kind of at light now. Um, I used to kind of like some of the Complex stuff until the, the Verizon purchase. The Verizon purchase kind of told me what that was, who they was going to get. Like, they were already kind of gearing to a, to a certain demographic, but it just solidified what was going to happen. And, I mean, that's what, it, what happened, pretty much. That, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's for the, the, the suburban teenage kid who doesn't, you know, they're not going to refute most of this stuff because they're not going to try to do the research on their own to figure out what this stuff means. Yeah. You know, that's why they... They had these polls or these, these sneakers, and they people get mad. Like they get mad at complex polls. Like they get mad at the Grammys. Like the artists get mad at the Grammys. <laughs> yeah. Like of course they're gonna give you what they they give you because it's a mainstream only. Like we in pocket or in bed with certain certain people or certain entities, so we gotta we gotta protect our our connects. Yeah. You know so. I'm not I'm not sad to see everyday struggle go. I feel like that this has been a, a long time coming. Um, I respect what academics has done as you know building up his own thing, but the way he did it, not necessarily. Um, Facts. Facts. You know, because I mean? he he did a lot of exploiting of Chicago. What I think of and the most was with the Chicago drill scene stuff, because he was like pretty much like the police. Yeah, he was definitely he was definitely in the feds for sure. You know. So and then then obviously in more recent times with this whole six nine stuff. So, I, I mean, I shout out to Wayno. I like Wayno. Uh, shout out Nadeska. I love Nadeska. Shout out Chink, uh, Jinx, who got out of Complex. Man, shout out Sean Evans. Shout out Jinx, man. Man, because you know it's, it's, they got some people that's really into you know they they legit. They've had people come out of that office that are legit, but it, it's a lot of fuckery over there too. So. Goodbye, good riddance, uh, everyday struggle. Yeah, and I feel bad for Mark Echo. I, I yeah. think when he start when he started Complex, that that whole thing, like he did with the the Echo Unlimited line, he started out to be uplifting for the culture, and to kind of see it to gone the way it's gone now. Complex isn't the same anymore. Like you said, now with you know with you got bigger hands in the pot now, you're liable to see things change that really shake up the core essence of what the, the company was founded on. So, you know, good, good luck to all those guys. Um, you know, and you know, that the space now for, for a hip hop television show and now is, is kind of wide open. So we'll see who comes out and who wants to get into that space next. I mean, are you, are you really interested for that to come or, or somebody to fill that space? I'm curious to see who's going to try. Because would, I think, what would keep you in tune with it? it? It would have to be the personalities that they choose to actually re- relay that information every day. 
Okay. It, it would have to be in at the platform that it's on. Like it would have to be where like everyday struggle was at first. Where like they, they, they went with a certain company that believed in what they were trying to do. They stood by them and you know, they had the people that were on there that people respect their opinions and they're not going to give you a biased opinion. They're going to be unbiased in, in the way that they think in the way they portray the, their, they relay the information. So that's what I'm looking for. I think that idea is dead. I think that space has been taken over by podcasting. I was going to say that's that. why we see everyday struggle being retired right now. Uh, Complex is also trying to dip their toe in the podcasting themselves as well. So I feel that this whole thing is like we're getting rid of that entity because it, one, it costs too much. It costs too much to have filming and 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 what they're paying these hosts and 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 um you know the film crew and production uh, like that that cost and they they probably not making that money enough like clearly the numbers have been down since Joe left yep so I mean I, I think that space is done and then uh, the the podcast game came to crack game. Everybody got to get a piece now. And yeah. I think that's what they, that's what's happening. My my only my only rebuttal to that is I do think there is a space for it. What's going to happen is whoever gets in that space, whoever is big enough to get in that space, is we're going to see how that works. Cuz honestly, I could see I could see Joe and Academics doing something together on his platform. I, I could see Joe doing something with academics. I hope he doesn't, oh, but I could see yeah, him doing something like that. Oh, I'm I'm good. What about you, Ty? What do you think of it? <laughs> be, well, I mean, I was never, really, I never really checked for <laughs> any of it in the beginning. But uh, that's 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 why I asked. You know what 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 would intrigue you to 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 tune in? Um, just because a lot of, I don't know. Me personally, man, I try not to consume a lot of news. And and like a, a lot of like, what's going on with this person? What's going on with that person? Like some of that stuff is is important to know and just to be aware of. Um, but I, I guess I'm just not in that space yet to 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 be checking for that type of information. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna ask Mike this then because he's the one looking for it, right? Do you feel that it's it's we're in a place now where the independence is about to take over these corporates? Hmm. It's that simple. To, okay, so you, nothing, to, nothing else to it. You just you feel that that's the the new movement is independent now, right? Oh, that was a question. Oh, I thought you had more to it. Oh, my bad. My no, bad. no, no. Um, that's how I was gonna start it for right now. Yeah, I I, I think so. I, I th- well, I'm not gonna say. I don't want to give it like a, a a certified stamp of approval, but I do see it leaning towards that way. Um, I, I think people are starting to kind of wake up a little bit and realize that. You know, a lot of these companies are, they're, they're not really who they say they are. And I think this pandemic has really shaken the, the landscape of the economy to where a lot of these companies now have to, ne- to dump things because they can't afford to keep it up anymore because people are really, th- that's not of concern anymore. Mm-hmm. That's, not a, that's not a priority for certain people anymore. So I, I, I understand where Ty's coming from when he says like, you know, hey, I, like this isn't important. Like I, I don't necessarily feel like I need this news, but there is a small community of people that really want to see that. Like I don't watch every struggle every day. I, hell, I barely listen to really any podcast outside of this one. So if you have a podcast with it, like if I, if it's good, I'll check it out. Like I, I won't check it out every day, but I'll go back and listen to some episodes. But I think there is a thing too, where too much, too much of one thing can be a bad thing. So, oh, you know, anything. Yeah. 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 So I think, you know, that's kind of what we're getting to right now with the podcasting. And I think that there's going to be some weeding out of things. And I think we're going to start seeing more platforms being released. I mean, hell, we, like, I know we keep talking about Pharrell, but he also lost a podcast network this week. So he's been On the tone. Yep. So he's, he's, he's getting into the space. We heard Dreamville was trying to get into this space. Like, there's a lot of, really artists and, and just kind of creatives getting into this pace now, where they're trying to create their own networks. So it's going to be interesting to see how this, how this works. Um, audio is always going to be around. It's always going to be something that's needed. So we're, we're going to see how that, how that works out. But uh, 
I do think the independents are definitely coming. Uh, when that day will come when they overtake it, that's that yes to be rain to be seen. Well, then my next question, what is your thoughts on these networks? Like all these networks popping up, like. And same for you, Ty. Like, I know you don't like really consume most a lot of it, but you can have an opinion on all of these big entities or corporate figures wanting to make their own, like they want to dip their toe into the podcast game. So they created a network. Oh yeah, I mean they, show. they they losing they're losing a lot of the creators that I think now what we're seeing is they're losing a lot of people that contribute to that do the real contribution outside of the the money. And the and I think uh you know the people that are are the creators are becoming a bit more smarter and are wanting a bigger piece of the pie which they should be entitled to. Um but corporate has a way of hiding numbers. Um so not the woke people, but the people that are actually in it, that have understandings of all sides of the of the business, I think are becoming more aware to the things that they're not entitled to when dealing with corporations. And, uh, you know, it will become to be more organic um, and touch the people that it really needs to touch. And those people can support the people that really need support because you got, you got a lot of corporations that don't really care about what are what's on the network. They just want the numbers there. And if the number's not there, you getting canceled. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're not producing, we're going to find something else. And, you know, I have a, a high respect for those that are following that trend to really understand, like, let's be honest, everybody, I'm not saying this that so that everybody can be an owner because that's not that's that's not feasible. Everybody can't do that just because of their understanding of it. You probably do yourself more harm than good if you go into it at that avenue not having the understanding that you need to have. But you can hire somebody who feels how you feel about the content that you're that you're putting out and presenting that can that can take that operation or that department of the content over and say, hey, we have like minds, you know, we we agree on what's being said and what's being presented on this network. How about we formulate? And that takes you out of being the owner, but you have an understanding of what goes on and you can contribute to that. You can say things that make the big fish, air quotes, uh, abide by what you want. You can't go storm into a corporation and say, I want to talk about this this week in some cases, unless you have that executive producer title or whatever the case may be. So long story short, I support the ones that are coming out of the corporate to go independent that really have an understanding of all aspects so that they make sure it's going to be carried out. Not nobody that's acting on emotion. What about you, Mike? What you think? I'll be honest, man. Um, I think some of this stuff is forced. Um, and I think some people are just, like you mentioned earlier, some people are just trying to, do, trying to get a bag. They see a market that's bubbling and sizzling. And quite frankly, it's still developing. And they're trying to find ways to insert themselves in this space to, to be there and be ready for it when it does blow up, when it does explode, uh, when, it, when, it, when it does reach its ultimate peak. Um, but what happens is what I want these networks to start doing is I don't mind you putting your friends on, but if you really want to be a true change, proponent of change in this space, start reaching out to people that, that are doing things like start, start reaching out to some of these, these podcasts or some of these young, smaller podcasts where you feel like all those guys need is a push. All they need is a break. And that's what if they're if that's what they're looking for. If they're looking for that big break. They're looking for that that plug. Like don't don't just put people that you that you know on and think that they're trying to be funny. Like some of your people y'all be putting on ain't really that great. Or they already hot. But yeah, exactly. Exactly. I still like what comes to mind is the Black Effect Podcast Network. Have you heard anything else since that was announced? 
Nah, man. How that's man. made any impact of any any change, and not to throw shots at that person who owns that podcast network, but or is well, I don't know what that was. Whatever they, <laughs> it's partnership, man. Yeah, not to throw shade at any of that. <laughs> it's just like when I hear about these people, and now, now I'm gonna get into why I think about it. I hear all these people talking about these networks, 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 and basically the network game that already happened already. Like we saw, like. The Ringer Network. We saw the Loudspeakers Network. What's the next step? These networks, like, it's cool. All right, cool. You got a a, a, a division of podcasts that you have. So, you know, you're going to consider yourself a network, which is cool. But what is this network doing for me as a, as a member of it, being a member of this network? Like you, you gonna just basically say, "Oh, well, thanks for li-. like that's like us going on." Hey, thanks for listening to Whiskey and Wisdom podcast. If you like this podcast, go ahead and tune into the artist fe- uh, artist talk over on Instagram. Brought to you by Mike and like like what what is that doing necessarily? How is anybody making any money just playing? Oh, just go listen to this podcast now, and then go listen to this podcast now. Because if I'm gonna get onto a record label, the record label, if I'm making myself, high, what is the record label doing? Just taking money, basically. So that's what the that's what the the whole podcast network is turning into now. The whole podcast network is like, oh, well, you make yourself hot, and we're gonna get you onto the same advertisements that the other podcast got. You know what I mean? Like, insert ad here. Insert ad here. Hey guys, you enjoying this podcast? Thanks for listening. And while you while you're at it, go check out Block. Like, <laughs> and the people who they they advertise it for, they don't even represent. They don't even fuck with. It's just a check, man. Yeah, that's the so, nastiness. That's what I'm like. Y'all just doing. Y'all just basically copying in the script, and slapping your name on it, and moving it forward. There ain't nothing changed yet. What did? Uh, uh, I'll give it away. I'm waiting on the network that creates their own platform where you consume, you can only consume and exclusively from not one of these big company names. That's the next step. Y'all, the networks, all these networks is telling you, go to YouTube and listen. Go to Apple Music and listen. Go to Spotify and listen. Go to insert whatever companies uh is here what is what else is it google music or google play and, google play and stitcher and, and stitcher anchor radio and, yeah, and anchor yeah, yeah. like those are ones who making the money because they are hosting your podcast and they hosting all these other podcasts and we're a victim of it too because we put our stuff on it they the ones getting the money when people listen to it they they get the streams so whatever the stream is or if they got it then they getting it because they ain't splitting it down they, like that's where the money's gonna be at is when you say you know what if you wanna listen to the Whiskey Wisdom Podcast tune in to the Whiskey Wisdom Podcast Network and get the app today it's exclusively on that app and hey. yes you're not gonna get the everybody not gonna follow immediately because everybody it's, it's difficulties for people with these apps and I get that part but you don't try to like if you shoot at everybody you might hit a couple of people Like that's what it is, like, you know what I mean? Like uh, these companies, if it, a thousand fans sometimes is worth more than a million. Yep. Especially when you got a thousand loyal fans. Yeah. Like that's that's the key, and I don't hit, I don't ever hear that come up for these networks, and and uh, yeah, we could be just shouting to the to the empty rafters, but eventually somebody gonna hear this shit. I mean, well, not eventually. They they, they be hearing this shit because I be hearing these takes be moving around. So, <laughs> ooh, boy, some of y'all are disgusting out here in these streets. So then, you know, that's why I'm. I don't don't come hollering at us about a network deal. I'll just say that much. That's a fact. You know, just just keep on listening, keep on subscribing, tell a friend, tell a friend. What they say on YouTube: like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> 
There you go. Like, you like, know. comment, subscribe, and share, guys. Yep. Yeah. And uh, all these companies that be talking about these ads and all that stuff, y'all not low to. So don't come when it get hot. Facts. We rocking with who rock with us. So and that's that's the key. I, I, that's what I mean when I ask y'all about the independence versus corporate thing. Because these corporate things, they just, they follow in the script. Yeah. The independence, we haven't seen that independent person or group get to that next level yet. And we know what's going to happen. They're going to do it and everybody's going to try to follow suit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, it, and it's nasty that the record label is starting to get into this to this game now. They did it with the influencers, now they're doing it with the podcasting. Oh man, y'all people in the in the music, these artists, music artists, go look at the script of the uh, uh currency. Please. Go look at the script of uh Toby. Go see what them them brothers is doing over there. Respect to the legend Tech Nine. Tech Nine. Yeah. Yep. But hey, man, like you say before, bro, this is rinse, recycle, repeat. <laughs> and now I'm off my soapbox. Hey, what else y'all want to go to? <laughs> Speaking of rinse, recycle, and repeat, man, LeBron. <clears throat> Team LeBron. I'm going to I'm 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 talk, talk to you for a second, Bronny. I'm going to talk to you for a second, Bron. I'm going to talk to you for a second. You, you my guy, right? Nobody wants to have Team LeBron's, bro. Nobody. Nobody. I, I like I like a good majority of shoes. I don't like all of them, but nobody wants to be a Team LeBron guy. And I think, honestly, if I'm being really honest, the only reason why you're doing that is because you feel a little slighted right now. You, you know, look, Michael Jordan's the only person that's got, or was the only person. In his t- in his time, to have ownership yeah, taken. Put some, in the put, some time. Res- put some respect on Steph's name. And uh, you know, Jordan Jordan got his own imprint. Steph Curry is the only other person that went with Under Armour. He didn't go with the big company. He went with the little company that he can make some money off of, and that was going to give him an equity stake, so he can actually own something. So now he has his own line. Just because Steph came out with his line this week don't mean you got to try to poo-poo it and put your own your own little team together. Unless Nike comes back to the drawing board and gives you a deal with equity stake in it, then all praises do. But until then, let Steph have his moment. Because that was big. It be nasty, bro. It's nasty out here, man. I'm not even going to say the company name. Then why are you even talking about it then? Like... Oh man! Listen, man. I, listen, man. It's something you gotta call like we see it. As simple as that, bro. It's just it's it's not it's not cool. Also, Nike, y'all gotta stop giving shoe deals to people that don't deserve it. I.e., Paul George. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Paul jo- Paul George might be a superstar in name, but he's not a superstar on the court. Relax. Don't don't stop giving people. Stop giving people shoes, man. That that ain't that ain't the move. Damn, y'all Paul just giving George anybody shoes. Shot, yeah, you're getting shot, man. It's Paul George for some we, bullshit. We need to start pre-potting because I didn't even know that was coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, no, nah, that's it. I'm I'm done, man. Paul George got a stray. It's just, it's, just, it's just disgusting, man. Some of the stuff you see out here is just it's just it's just nasty. I I didn't like the whole LeBron thing. I thought it was kind of backhanded, and it was calculated. You you went on the podcast that's on your platform to do an interview. Well, well, you want to talk about it? Well, if y'all want to talk about it, listen, man. If y'all want to talk about it, because it's people like we, it goes to the podcast network thing again. People getting in to kind of try to dictate what the what the theme is or what the the actual factual what happened is. Yeah, they want to make their own version of what what had happened was. Yeah, you're trying to trying to trying to change the narrative to suit them, and that's that's not 
that's that's not cool. And quite frankly, you 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 got in a podcast with your friends. Like like let's be honest here. You got in a podcast with your friends. Everything about it was product placement. So like mm, yeah. They was weren't they drinking his new wine? They were drinking his new tequila. 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 Hey y'all, well, we know we know we know uh Michael get a bottle though. <laughs> nah. Hey, hashtag hashtag bronze tequila, man. New just got it in. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you get your influencer on for LeBron. <laughs> nah, man. Down, he Mike. he don't he don't he don't own it, so I'm not gonna support anybody to own their own shit. Mm. What well, mm. you, you stumbled upon something really really nice there. <laughs> so at what point do we support? Like you gotta start somewhere. Listen, bro. You got to start. Listen, right? I mean, you you truly you, do have right. to start somewhere. You right, but with a motherfucker that's got a hundred million dollars, I'm not starting there. Mm. There's too many people Damn. out here that got great tequila, black owned companies that have great tequila that started from the ground up that need Name help. Em. Name oh, em. listen, listen. Favor Favor Vodka is one company. Their uh their vodka is made out of pomegranates. Who who else makes vodka out of pomegranates? Huh? Nobody. But nobody wants to shout them out. They're at black wine festivals, at black different fe- like they're all over the place. Mm-hmm. Like Barrel, Barrel Brothers. They're they're yeah, only isolated to Tennessee because and they got a good following there. But I'm hoping for them to mass scale because right now they don't ship outside of the state. So that's another company I'm I'm waiting to die to try out to get my hands on. Um McBride Sisters. McBride Sisters. They 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 got a few different wines in places um that we've tried. I mean it's just you got them. You got the Brown Estate. They're a wine company up in Napa, a wine winery and vineyard in Napa Valley, black owned. It's, it's plenty of places that you can go, man. Oh, 10, 10 to one rum. Those guys are in New York. They're from the Caribbean. They got their own rum company. They just had a actually they got a, a special one that they just brought out a Respato that they just brought out recently. Or not a Respato, um, a Dark Age rum. They just ten year Dark Age rum they just released last week for the for Black Friday. It's, it's companies like that that are out there. I don't really care about LeBron and his 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 friends releasing the tequila because he likes to drink tequila and eat tacos. Who the, who gives a fuck? <laughs> well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. His friends, right? Hmm. Yep. So that will probably be the first if they're interested in something. For example, us here. If I know y'all are interested in something, and I know I have a passion for something. I'm I'm not gonna tell you that I'm gonna go find somebody that's already doing it. Mm. If y'all have that same interest as me, and 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 that that has that's a key now. Not that you just like drinking it, but if you you know you really have a a, a passion for sitting down and, and and indulging in this type of product, mm. I cannot tell you that I'm gonna go find somebody that's already doing it. Yeah, because I want to have my own. Exactly. I want to do my own. And that's a good point because I that's a good point to the Pharrell. But going back to Pharrell, kind of, uh, so what if he, if he wants to say, I want to do my own thing? I want it to be mine. Now, now what, now what my mindset and I, I feel like our mindsets are, if we're in, a, you know, we, we got LeBron money. Okay. So we, we, we figure out what we like. Not, not that we're not going to go and support one of the smaller ones. But once we have a platform big enough, once we get our stuff off the ground, how we want to get it, how about we then put them on our platform or start having tastings around the world where we go to theirs because we got the big name at that point. And then we could do something like that where we're in, in it's inclusion. And then you're helping a small company get notoriety or, or across the world. I can see that. But I don't know that I could be mad at somebody for having the means to do something and not want to do it alone. Listen, I'm not mad, and I agree with you 100. percent I'm just not supporting the shit. That's all. Oh, I mean, you, I mean, you got that right. That's it. I, I'm not mad at LeBron doing that. He, he has every right to do that. He's earned the right to do that. So has everybody else that wants to develop a tequila company or a cigar company, whatever the case may be. I'm just going to support the people that, quite frankly, got it out the mud. That's the people I'm going to try to support first and foremost, if if I can. I like what Melo's doing with wine. Love that wine down Wednesday with Melo. Genius. Genius. I love, if you're not subscribed, if you're not tapped in, like that, I love what he's doing with wine. I like a I, like, low key, Melo, I, I, like, I love the way he operates 
outside of basketball. Yeah. Not He's saying smooth, not, not 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 to take a shot at his basketball game. It has nothing to do with that. I just him as a as a human, I love the way he operates as a businessman. His his, yeah, his business acumen is kind of like it's next level. Like the the fact that he started doing this, like he was doing this in the court in the bubble. So like the mm-hmm. fact that now he's got like a an actual like production with it now. Like he he's and then like he's still doing the whole tech investment ventures and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I, I I'm I'm with you, bro. I, I fuck with everything Melo is doing right now. I love it. And he's used the platform to not only put on for us to learn about wine if you weren't into it. But he's also taking that time to have black owned um people come on, like black owned mm-hmm. winery vineyards come on and, and talk about their wine or uh sommeliers come on and talk about getting into wine and mm-hmm. and not only just that, but he's also talked to to black activists that had them online and it, he's he's not just using the platform to kind of you know boost big, himself big up himself facts he's bigging up other people. Um, like they always talk about wine that like what what with LeBron drinking wine, he just he he what not that uh, I hate that it's gonna sound like I'm throwing shots at him. Right. But to me, it's like when you when you're looking at those influences, that's what it is. That's what it is, that's what it is. It's back to the influence of conversation. He's not necessarily taking the time to put us on to things that's attainable to the people that he's influencing. Mm. You know what I mean? He he's he's he, yes, I enjoy this wine. And, you know, this is some wine that you, most of these people who are following ain't going to ever get because it's, it's way too much money for what it is. Like, these wines is 1980, 1990, you know, early, early, early vintages of wine that you just not going to get your hands on mm-hmm. as a regular consumer. And it's never taken the opportunity to show you can't get this, but you can try this. This is also good. And this ain't nothing but a $20 bottle. Yep, and that's why I said I, I love what Melo is doing because I'm I was about to say the f word. I'm trying to clean up my cursing. I love what Melo was is doing because if you sign up to his newsletter, he gives you a a dollar wine, the the, mm-hmm. the one dollar symbol like the the mm-hmm. cheap wine, the middle mm-hmm. wine, and the expensive wine. Yep. I, I honestly, I think the best episode that I've seen that he did with, with, was with Jimmy Butler. And I Even love all I, Jimmy drink is that Bordeaux or Bordeaux. <laughs> yeah, he, all he but, drink is French wine. All, all, and, all, and he talked about he dropped name dropped Mark Warburg like a hundred times. But, <laughs> 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 but, um, but they were honest though. They were honest yeah. about their 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 affinity for wine and how they got started. Like, you know, Mello was like, he was, he wanted shame to say like, yeah, I was drinking that, that barefoot wine at first. Like, I, like, I didn't know anything mm-hmm. about wine. And then how and then we started he getting a, into it. He was a Henny drinker before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. So everybody got their pass, man. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts. Facts. But yeah, like if, if you're going to use your platform, use, use it properly. And that's, that's all I ask. And I think that's all we've been really been trying to say here. Um, just just use it properly. That's it. And like you said, like LeBron out there posting stuff. Like that's cool. You want to put your friends on, but like put some other people on. Like like give a, give a shout out to something else if if you or use that platform. Like Ty was saying to kind of bring awareness to other different brands. Like your brand isn't the only one that exists. And your platform is too important to just be watered down like that. True. And I, I and he's too smart of a businessman. Well, these people are too smart of business people. To not think that they can just like they can do more than you know, not, it's not man, necessarily that might not be the best way to say it either because it ain't their responsibility to do more. That that's but, that's kind of all I was, you know. That, yeah. that that's why I was voicing what I voiced. You know, we yeah. at the end of the day, they're human and they and they got things that they want to achieve. And I'm not gonna lie, you know, it is, it's it's it can be difficult to shift what your habits are for example i've always used um dove right always used dove. the the deodorant soap everything one random day i don't know how but me and mike was having a conversation about what he liked to use and he told me about bevel 
Well, if you go in my bathroom today, you won't see a drop of a drop of dove. You'll only see bevel. But I only that's only because I trust Mike in in his opinions, obviously, the brotherhood, the relationship there. But if we don't if we're not having these talks and it, it's it's I just think it's hard to change that type of habit without somebody really sh- really, you know, introducing you to another product. Cuz we we yeah. move off a of routine and habits. And a lot of times yeah. I got you got to take a step back to transition. It's not as easy everybody's, you know, say shop black, shop black, shop black, shop black, but they don't give like specifics. Like when when Mike was telling me about the product, I ain't going to lie, like I got I got sticker shock because I didn't pay that much for Dove. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. I, 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 I didn't. I didn't pay that much. I could get the whole. I could get the. I could get the shampoo. I could get the the lotion. I could get the uh, the little face stuff they got. They got a little face joint and um and deodorant. I I was not paying that much for that. Um, but when I got it and I and I read the story and I kind of understood what they were doing. They even have tutorials. They got videos. They got everything that you need to kind of really know how to use their products um it was a no-brainer at that, at that point it was all it was almost like a a uh I don't know, a connection that i made with the brand right and so now i won't buy anything outside of that even and and i can't i don't even go into another store to buy it. i want it direct from them um so i will wait the shipping time i will pay the shipping time just because i want it i wanted to come straight from them that's just my personal ordeal but um you know everybody wants us to just flick the switch overnight and it's not that easy not that i'm against shopping black but the awareness and where the products are coming from and the quality means a lot and for me not to have that i i I cannot tell you that i'm just gonna jump jump and do it well to that point what i hear is you saying that it, it takes us to not only talk about it but spread the word of actual uses of it right as well as be open to taking the op- like the be open to taking the the chance on these companies to allow them that opportunity to fit the bill for you or not mm-hmm. you know yeah um uh, similar thing with the the, the rosé thing the lefay Yep, y'all showed me that on Instagram, and you know, normally I don't be buying that off no IG post, but <laughs> <laughs> I took a chance. It was twenty bucks. I was like, "Why not?" Yeah, and now I frequent there a lot. I buy six packs every every so often. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, this. Go ahead, Mike. My bad. No, no. I was, I was gonna say, you know, I, I, honestly, Taz, Taz, actually, Taz, perfectly right. He's, he's, he's perfectly honestly right. I think if we're honest with ourselves, it does take a lot of rewiring that we have to do. I, like, it, it, you know, and I call myself a hypocrite here. I know, you know, Freedom Paper Company. Um, I know they make black on toilet paper and paper towels. I still go out and shop. <laughs> I go to BJ's. Like, I haven't given them a try yet. And that's because my way my brain works. Uh, Two hundred dollars is a little too steep for me to get some some stuff like that. But if it's if it's worth it for me, then I, I have to make that change. And at some point, I will. But you know, we, we all have to have that that rewiring done. So, and, and you know, again, I maybe I maybe I might be a little too harsh on LeBron with the tequila. I might be. But um, just a, just a little bit, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I think what it is is because you because you it was the team LeBron plus the tequila thing that kind of took it over the edge. I guess. Yeah, you got hit with a lot this week. Yeah, you didn't get you didn't start <laughs> off with love. You should start it off like bang bang. <laughs> you didn't get a chance to process everything as it was coming at you. <laughs> uh, Yo, yeah, y'all know me pretty well. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, and I guess too because it's it's <laughs> I, I know where it's coming from, or at least I think I know where it's coming from. Like I, to me, it's just like 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 Bruce is saying, like he he's too smart of an individual to 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 be that calculated to to not know that if if you sit back and actually look, like your timing timing is everything, and the timing of everything that he did was just a little a little weird to me. Yeah, he definitely shitted on a black man to, to uprise himself like that, and that was that was the slight. 
Yeah. The fact that him saying, I'm not even going to say the company name, like, we know who the shots is at because we know what that individual was wearing. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was kind of, you know, it was tasteless. Like, and I think he could be more tasteful than that, especially in the, where we're at in today's climate. Like, he didn't need to break it up. He could have just simply said, hey, I wanted Luca to be Team LeBron, and it would have been fine just like that. Absolutely. And they say, yo, my, my, my hopes and goal is to at some point down the line develop a team, a roster of players that are stars, superstars in this league that will be wearing my shoes. That's all he had to say. But for you to come out and do that on your platform and be that irresponsible with, with, the, with the podcast that you had with your friends, because you know, Richard Jefferson, Channing, Channing Fry, they're, they're his former teammates. They're friends of his. They know him. They got his number to his phone. Like, so you know what I mean? Like, it, it, to me, it, it, like you said, it was tasteless. It was egregious. It was irresponsible. And um, those are things sometimes where people look at you and say, yeah, you, you can't be about – black people and, and the betterment and, and the, the social justice when you do shit like this. That doesn't add up. You open that opportunity, yeah. You, yeah, you open yourself up for that fire. So when you when you get it, you got to receive it. Receive it how you receive it how you gave it. That's all. And that, I guess that's where my, my energy came from. Because I, 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 th- I, I think of LeBron better than that. I don't look at him as a role model, but I think he, he's, he's better than that. And he can, he can do better than that. And I think when you know better, you do better. In some cases. Yeah. Yes, in, in some, some cases. cases. In some cases, right. right. Some, not all individuals built the same. <laughs> true. 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 In some cases. In some cases. Well, I ain't had enough, man. I'm done talking, man. Let's get out of here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, that that's been a that's been another wrap. That's been another week. Uh thank you guys for coming back and listening to another installment of the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast. This has been episode number forty seven. I uh, hope you enjoyed your time with us today. I hope you gather some info and some entertainment that can get you through your work week or your weekend um and uh hopefully you come back and see us on the next one um but before we get out of here man just want to throw our little takes in there where you can find us uh how you can like, follow us subscribe like comment <laughs> and subscribe you know we got to throw that in there throw that in there um ig you know follow us on ig whiskey and wisdom pod twitter whiskey w-i-s-d one Follow us on Twitter, Twitter fingers, get them, get them clicking. Um, also, man, follow us on uh, our our own our own platform, whiskeyandwisdompodcast.com. You can uh, you can listen to the podcast there and, and previous podcasts. Also, we got a new uh, new playlist up there, um, uh, a, a, little, a little birthday gift to one that we uh, like to listen to. I'll let you check that out. Um, go see what that's all about, and. Uh, until next time, man, just uh, you know, keep it positive. You know, we, we are still in unique times. Uh, we, we got a lot of a lot of gathering times that we're used to uh, around this time of year. We got we got the big holiday coming up. So just be cautious, uh, you know, uh, social distance, wear your mask, do all that fun stuff. And uh, just exercise with caution, man. Just be cautious. We want we want to we want to be able to connect with you uh, uh, once we are able to move around a little bit more freely. Uh, so let's let's be cautious and make sure we can do that when that time presents itself. But until next time, man, signing off. This is your boy, Ty Brown, along with my brothers. I'm saying peace. I'm going to let them say peace, and we're going to get up out of here. Peace. peace.